All right, time now for French Connections, our weekly look at the intricacies of life here in France. Now, this week, we're going to focus on the First World War and the 100-year anniversary of the end of the Great War, of course, on November the 11th, 2018. Yeah, and we don't have time, of course, to go into all the details of uh, all the battles that happened during the Great War, but I wanted to focus on a few of the topics that come up when you talk about uh, La Grande Guerre, as it's called here, uh, the Great War. Uh, it was supposed to be what they, they said would be the death des guerres, la dernière des dernières guerres, the last of the last wars, and in, instead it ended up being this unexpected carnage. 1.4 million French soldiers were killed during World War One. That's one in five of the soldiers that participated in the war. Uh, essentially, a whole generation was decimated. And if you travel around France, you can you can see a visual representation of this in many villages and towns. There will be a monument, and on that will be a, a list of names of people uh, that were killed during the war. Right, well, there's a special expression for French soldiers who fought in the war flow. It's our word du jour. Uh, they're called les poilus. Uh, poilu is uh, literally the hairy one, uh, and it's widely used as a term of endearment for French soldiers that fought in World War I. Now, uh, soldiers that were fighting uh, on the front were fighting in very rustic conditions. Uh, they essentially, their daily life was mud, blood, shelling, and shrapnel, and so they didn't really have opportunities to shave, for instance. And so their mustaches and beards grew out, and people think that this is why we refer to them as les poilus, the hairy ones. All right, well, the beginning of the war was extremely chaotic, and the poilus were helped out by civilians uh, to get to the front. This is an anecdote that comes up a lot when you're talking about the First World War. It happened in September 1914. So German troops essentially advanced very quickly uh, to just a few kilometers just outside of Paris, and the French army actually requisitioned a fleet of Parisian taxis to transport French troops to the front. Uh, and it, uh, this, this was the first battle of the Marne, and so they came to be known as the taxis, uh, de la Marne. Now, it didn't really change the outcome of the battle, but it really had an important psychological impact on the population and quickly became a symbol of national unity and solidarity. All right, well, among the ranks of the Poilu uh, were, who were fighting in World War I were soldiers uh, from what were French colonies at the time. And collectively, they're referred to as les tirailleurs sénégalais, the Senegalese sharpshooters, but they really came from many countries that were colonies at the time, so Senegal, Mali, Ivory Coast, as well as what was Indochina at the time. Now, the tirailleurs sénégalais participated in many wars in the 20th century, and in World War I, there were about 130 thousand troops. Uh, some of them were volunteers. A lot of them were enrolled by force, and they fought in all the great battles, so the Battle of the Somme, Verdun, the Chemin des Dames. A fifth of them never saw their homes again. Take a listen. It's important to remind people that the tirailleurs contributed to the war effort and were completely part of the French nation. The tirailleurs sénégalais are often uh, considered the forgotten ones because after the colonies became independent, France essentially froze their pensions, and it was only in 2001 that they were considered veterans like other veterans. Well, in the aftermath of the war flow, another group of veterans was uh, largely forgotten, the so-called Gulcassi. Well, of the estimated 4.2 million French soldiers that were wounded during the war, 15,000 were called the so that's a, the broken faces. Gueule is a kind of slang word for the word face. And in many ways, they became the symbol of how destructive World War I was. But immediately after the war, they weren't actually considered veterans because since they could still use their arms and legs, they were considered valid for manual labor and therefore they were exempt from support and benefits that other veterans got. Look at this man. When he got out of hospital, he walked around the street like this, and he scared people. And that made it hard for him to get a job. Companies didn't want him. And on top of that, being disfigured wasn't recognized, so he didn't get any compensation. Now, the Gulcassé did get a little bit of revenge on history, though, because in an effort to raise money for their cause, they invented the ancestor of the lottery here in France, and they hit the jackpot. Even today, when you play the French lottery, you're helping out their association because they get a, a cut on each ticket, and so they rake in millions of euros every year. And this money, they invest in facilities for veterans, but also hospitals and medical research.
Right, Flo, the 11th of November is a public holiday here in France, as is the 8th of May, which marks the end of World War II in Europe. What Armistice Day commemorates has changed, though, in the recent years, as all of the poilus have now passed away. Well, the 11th of November has been extended to pay tribute to all soldiers who have died fighting for France, including in recent combat. It's, it's kind of become a broader Remembrance Day. Now, how important is it to mark the end of the Great War in particular well, opinions are divided. World War I wasn't the only important war. All wars are important. Every armistice is important. World War I is old now. There have been many since. We shouldn't forget what happened back then. It contributed to what our country has become. Events like that made what France is today. Within the commemoration, there is some controversy, however. The president, uh, Emmanuel Macron, sparked a scandal when he suggested that it was legitimate to play tribute to uh, Philippe Pétain. Now, Philippe Pétain was a World War I hero, but he went on to lead the Vichy regime, collaborated with the Nazi. He was found guilty of national disgrace after World War II. Uh, and so the president faced a major backlash, and the Elysee actually back has backpedaled, saying it, he would be left out of commemoration. So a little bit of controversy there. And just one last thing, because I often get, get asked whether or not French people wear the poppy which is, of course, very popular in the UK. The poppy is not a thing here in France, but in recent years, you have been seeing more and more officials and TV presenters wearing a blue flower, the bleuet, the corn flower, uh, and money raised buying these, uh, these bleuets uh, go to helping families of soldiers, but also uh, families of victims of terrorism. Well, Flo, thank you for a really interesting look at the importance of the 11th of November here in France. That's all we have time for. In the meantime, if you do have some tweets, your questions can be tweeted to uh, Flo Villemineau, at Flo Villemineau, and you can also check out our website at france24.com.